Hello again, sorry about that interruption. I will start again. This is going to be part two of the uh, Banjo Ailey rebuild. I'll move this wire out of the way. So make sure your hands are clean when you start doing this part because the last thing you want is to put a nice big smear mark across your hard work. So now that that's roughly lined up, you want to get all this material and lift it up. Now the reason why this is the hard bit is quite frankly because you have to keep it all held down whilst putting on the top hoop, the tension hoop, whilst also making sure you're putting the hoop on the right way, whilst making sure the other hoop doesn't try and fly off. slipped on me. Right, so now we're at this stage. Time to get back all these hooks. And get them ready. You don't want to put them all on, just enough to hold it somewhat still. So as you can see I didn't quite put the vellum on evenly because it's long on this side and short on this side but it's not too much of a worry. So now I'll just put these hooks on every now and then as you can fit them in. Still taking care not to pop off all the hoops because otherwise guess what you have to start again and no that's not fun. <laughs> What you can also do is wrap back the socket and use that to get it on there. Don't tighten them up at all though. Just so that there's the ever so slight amount of resistance. So skip one, put one on, skip one, put one on, starting from the tailpiece. Sorry if I've stopped talking, I'm just trying to get it on and concentrate to make sure it doesn't all mess up. start on this side. Oh, 
hook, skip, hook, skip, and so on. <laughs> that one wasn't even on. Jeez, that last one was a bit fiddly. There we go. So now what we want to do is push both the rings up as high as we can, just until they hit the um, hooks. And actually, even then, I don't think we'll need to do that. It should do that automatically. So now what we can do. look around the hoop and if you see bunching up like that just took it a bit if there's like a little crease like that just pull it like that or over here and here that's quite bad there actually there we go or oh, there's a good one get a good grip on it and you, you just yank it not so hard that it tears, you want to yank firmly, but if it feels like it's going to do anything unsightly, ease off and move your fingers apart a bit more and keep trying. And then look here, and as you can see, there's the odd bit here, where it's sort of dipping. If it's happening and you can't really pull it tight again, try pushing the hoop down a bit like so hooks have started falling off, that's unfortunate you will need to start tightening some of these up as we go around pulling through because it will start tightening up and pulling the hoops down slowly as we remove some of these creases so as you can see it's got quite a bit of play in it still which is what we want I've only just noticed. Whoops. Then again, I guess I'm comp compensating for one of the hooks missing. And now that we're at this stage, we can. Oh, that's a bit loose. We can start putting the rest of the hooks on and theoretically yanking it down further. The way I do it personally is I get it so that the ring is only just slightly over the height of the vellum itself.
as you can see there's a slight bulge here and that's from where the masking tape is but I'm not too worried about it now I can peel it back and I can see it's semi clear there now usually I'd be worried about that but this is a particularly uh, thin vellum plus it's still damp so once it's dried up again that should go back to normal so it's still a bit springy so I'll get the rest of the hooks on and I think you understand how it works now hook then put the washer on and the nut so I'll pause the video and skip ahead So there it is with all the hooks on, all the way around except for that one obviously, all the way around. And all the hooks are roughly the same with how much I've tightened them. So just double check that you're happy with it, that it's set nicely and you've got the specific patterning you want on the, on the vellum. Some people sometimes have like little dark spots like there and all the way around here. And they like to rotate it around or even this part here which is this part here where it's discoloured. They like to try and tilt it so it's near where the where your finger marks would end up being. Right there. So So now that that's done, wait for it to dry. And this could take several days. I tend to wait about a day. Then I tighten it up a little bit, then I reassemble the uke. I might cut this now, whilst it's still easy to. Although, then again, I might leave it until it's dry, and then I'll be able to cut it, and it will also theoretically have. Um, shrunk down to the right size because if I cut it now I risk losing it because of how it's going underneath this tension hoop if I cut it too low and then it shrinks overnight it might just slip out from under there and then just gone again so that's the vellum that I had on it before and as you can see it's contracted down quite a lot and you can see the cut line all the way around and how dodgy my hands are when I'm cutting quite consistent there then suddenly it gets really really close consistent really close and there's actually a hole there which I never noticed and a split there so yeah and it looks great And a good way to test if it's right, just get like a roll of electrical tape and just drop it in the middle. It should, it shouldn't really drop it down at all. That's how I work it out. Don't do it that way because it just exerts too much pressure straight in the middle. Just put it on there like that. You can push it down slightly and it should rise right back up again. A bit bouncy. So yeah, still got a way to go to dry. So yeah, and I'll put that in the third video. So bye.